Hi folks, this is the news for your weekend and with me Vanessa. Indonesia and Brazil leaders present Modi with siblings at G20 summit. A group of 20 meeting in New Delhi with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi being presented with siblings by the leaders of Indonesia and Brazil. Indonesia and Brazil held the G20 presidencies of the previous year and the following year accordingly. After leaders adopted a consensus declaration in New Delhi that avoided condemning Russia for the war but highlighted the human suffering the conflict had caused and called on the all states not to use force to grab territory. Brazilian President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva said that Russian leader Vladimir Putin would not be arrested in Brazil if he attends the G20 meeting in Rio de Janeiro next year. China Coast Guard across Philippines resupply boat in South China Sea. The Philippines successfully completed their resupply mission for its troops stationed at the grounded warship in the South China Sea, encountering Chinese patrol vessels along the way. One of the Chinese Coast Guard ships was also seen going dangerously close to the Philippine Coast Guard vessel, which Reuters was on board, while several Chinese militia vessels tried to block its path. A United States Navy plane was also spotted overhead. The Philippine Coast Guard said, while the resupply mission was successfully, the Chinese Coast Guard and the militia section were illegal, aggressive, and destabilizing. Uh, we always encounter dangerous maneuvers, shadowing activities, blocking not only from China Coast Guard vessel, but also from uh, China militia vessels. Chinese Coast Guard said the two Philippine supply boats and two Coast Guard ships entered the waters adjacent to the shoal without permission from the Chinese government. The latest incident comes in the wake of rising tensions following a confrontation on August 5 when Chinese vessels fired water cannon at the Philippine boat delivering supplies to troops on the Sierra Madre warship grounded on the second Thomas Shoal. Trudeau meets with business leaders in Singapore. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau met with business leaders in Singapore as he continued his Indo-Pacific tour by promoting Canadian business and products. Um, it's a real pleasure to sit down with the CEO of Tomasic Holdings. Uh, you know, this, uh, your, uh, your investors all around the world, but uh, you've spent uh, uh, a lot of capital investing in, in Canada and in Canadian innovation, and uh, the opportunity to do even more together is, I think, something that, uh, uh, that we're very, uh, very excited about. It's a real pleasure to see you again. It's uh, uh, an opportunity to sit down with the CEO of, uh, of uh, GIC. Uh, significant uh, investments uh, in Canada over the past number of years since we last saw each other here. Yes. Uh, but also uh, lots more to do. I know there's, uh, there's a real interest by Canada in engaging uh, more substantively here in the region. According to Trudeau's office, the Prime Minister is working to strengthen bilateral relations, particularly by promoting Canadian exports and positioning Canada as a destination of choice for investment opportunities. He is also expected to meet with the Prime Minister of Singapore, Li Xian Lung, and a number of key private sector leaders. According to Trudeau's office, in 2022, Singapore was Canada's largest destination in Southeast Asia for Canadian direct investment abroad, $28 billion, and Canada's second largest source of foreign direct investment, $1.9 billion, from Southeast Asia. United States and Vietnam upgrade ties as Biden visits in hedge against China. The United States President Joe Biden secured deals with Vietnam on semiconductors and minerals as the strategic Southeast Asian nation elevated Washington to its highest diplomatic status alongside China and Russia. Vietnam is a critical power in the world and a bellwether in this vital region. And I look forward to continuing this new chapter in the story of our nation. We're working to tackle the climate crisis and to accelerate Vietnam's clean energy transition, strengthening global health security, and advanced treatments for cancer and HIV-AIDS, enhance our security cooperation, including countering trafficking in persons. I also raise the importance of respect for human rights as a priority for both my administration and the American people. 
and we'll continue to our candid dialogue on that. A half century after a lengthy and brutal Cold War era conflict, Biden arrived in Hanoi to a ceremony organized by the ruling Communist Party that included school children waving American flags and honor guards carrying bayoneted rifles. Human rights remain a controversial issue, with U.S. officials regularly criticizing Hanoi for jailing activists and limiting freedom of expression. Vietnam may show goodwill with diplomats suggesting activists could be free. China ready to further synergize development strategies with Indonesia. Chinese Premier Li Xiang said China is ready to work with Indonesia to implement the important consensus reached by the two countries' head of state, further enhance the synergy of development strategies, promote the common development of the two countries, and inject a lasting impetus to regional stability and prosperity. In talks with the Indonesian President Joko Widodo, Li first conveyed to him the cordial greetings from President Xi Jinping. Under the strategic guidance of the two heads of state, bilateral relations have maintained a strong momentum of development. During the meeting in China's Chengdu city over a month ago, President Xi and President Widodo reached new and important consensus on building the China-Indonesia community with a shared future. Meanwhile, Widodo said Indonesia adheres to the One China principle and is ready to enhance cooperation with China in areas including trade and investment, agriculture and fishery, infrastructure, digital economy, new energy, tourism and healthcare. Before he talks, Widodo held a welcoming ceremony for Lee at the presidential palace in Jakarta. Chinese Prime Minister meets United Nations Chief on reform of global economic governance system. Chinese Premier Li Xiang met with the United Nations UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres in Jakarta, calling for stepping up the reform of global economic governance system. Li and Guterres met on the sidelines of the leaders' meetings on East Asia cooperation held the Indonesian capital, namely the 26th China ASEAN Summit and the 26th ASEAN Plus 3 Summit and the 18th East Asia Summit. The Chinese Premier said the current international landscape is marked by chains and disorder, but the grimmer the situation is, the more the international community needs to unite and work together to meet the challenges. In addition, Guterres said that in the face of various challenges, countries should unite as one, enhance mutual trust, prevent the fragmentation of the world economy, and jointly cope with the global challenges. Noting that China plays an important role in advancing global agenda, the UN Secretary General said the UN is ready to strengthen dialogue and cooperation with China, promote reform of the international economic governance system, helping developing countries obtain sufficient resources to meet challenges such as food security, public health and climate change, and contribute to the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Japan Prime Minister says to keep demanding China lift seafood import ban. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said that his country will keep pressing China to end its ban on imports of Japanese seafood products using such forums as the World Trade Organization. We have until now received praise from many countries that the process of discharging the treated water from the Fukushima nuclear plant is safe and highly transparent, and I feel that this understanding is becoming more widespread. Regarding of suspension of imports of seafood products from China, we will take advantage of bilateral and multilateral opportunities and we will continue to call for an immediate withdrawal using forums such as the WTO and RCEP. China imposed the ban after Japan began releasing treated water from the Fukushima nuclear plant into the ocean last month and Japan says the water is safe, while China says it is a danger. Kishida speaking at a press conference in New Delhi on the sidelines of the G20 summit meeting also said he plans to reshuffle his cabinet. And thank you very much everyone. Have a nice weekend and we are surely glad to be able to see you all again next time. Bye.